Welcome back to part two of building the engine stand to put the engine in the airboat. In the video part one of the motor mounts, I made the general structure. And my design at that point was to have stainless steel feet that would fit over the aluminum channel that is the stringers. I've since modified that design. And what I'm gonna have now is basically a two part mount where it fastens to the boat. So I welded stainless bar together to make these channels. These will fit over the stringers. Each one of these has two bolts will, which will fit up into the main structure of the motor mounts. And the first time I did this, uh, the bolts hung down through the channel. So I used this um, tiny mill to mill it down. It worked okay. Obviously it's not a professional type mill, but I'm also not a professional machinist, so it went fine. Once everything was machined flush, I did reinforce it all with some extra welds. And on this one, because I wasn't sure how strong it would be with just the bottom there, I did run another bead all along the top of each bolt as well. A refinement in the design was to countersink the bolts. So basically I just countersunk them, welded them flush, and then ground them a bit to finish them off. And that actually was, a, I think, a much better and probably stronger way of doing it. And that's a re the result after countersinking and welding. And here we can see the stainless mount over the stringer and then how the overall rigging attaches to it. So the reason I went with this is because I think it'll be easier to remove it if I need to. Basically it fits on and off much easier. The part that attaches to the boat will basically stay there forever. And then if I needed to remove the rigging, I can do that. Now with the holes already in the stainless, I basically just ran this drill through the aluminum. And that's how I made the passage for the bolt that went all the way through. To do this job, I had to buy that new red angle drill. Uh, I stuck with Milwaukee because that's what I use for my other cordless tools. This one, it's a pretty good drill. It doesn't have the torque that the the brushless, my regular half inch brushless drill has, um, but overall it's a pretty good drill I think. So here all four mounts are securely bolted to the boat and the rigging structure is bolted to those mounts. Overall this appears to be very sturdy. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. As I mentioned in my previous video my plan was to reinforce uh, the structure and for that I used both one inch and three quarter inch stainless tubing. 
I put the tubing notcher back on the drill press. It seems to work its best here. I'm still not super happy with this model, but it's working well enough for now. Here I'm adding some bars. I would be curious to know what you guys are using for clamping tubing. At this point I was using tape to basically hold, in, hold it in place and then taking it and then just removing the tape. So I gotta say that wasn't a very good way to do it. It worked okay but it seems pretty hokey. A clamp that I found worked better was the sheet metal clamp. You can see it on the left side there. And it worked pretty well for holding tubing in place. The problem with it though is it works best when you have the same size tubing. So if I was using only one inch or only three quarter, it was fine. But making a joint between a three quarter and a one inch uh, was a little bit fussy with that clamp as well. So if you guys can recommend a good clamp, let me know. Once I had all the tubes added and everything tacked in place, then I unbolted everything and then I was able to move it around to try to get access so I could fully weld each joint. And I gotta say, this was a pretty tedious job. It took quite a few hours to get every single one done. I did do a full 360 degree weld on every single joint. Partly for strength and partly just so that I don't have to worry about uh, any water seeping into the tubing. It was a bit awkward and a bit challenging at times though, getting this structure moved around and getting into all the angles. But this is how it turned out, and I'm pretty happy with it. To my eye and my overall gestalt is I think it's pretty strong. Obviously it needs to handle the weight of the engine. It also needs to be able to handle the thrust that'll come from about 500 horsepower. So I hope it's strong enough. I'm not an engineer, so I didn't do any calculations. But just by eyeballing it, I think it's pretty strong. Of course, the trade-off of putting too much metal into it is that it'll make it too heavy. So I'm always trying to estimate that balance, and hopefully I got it right. Here you can see I'm starting to lift the engine on the cherry picker to get it up onto the engine stand. I did have to remove the intake manifold just so I could bring the chain down, just so that the cherry picker would lift it high enough. 
but it got up there no problem and bolted in pretty easily. So the engine stand is basically done. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I'm hoping it's strong enough and I think it will be. So there's lots of things to come. Up next I'll probably open up the engine a bit and do a few things in there. Uh, I have to do the turbo and the exhaust and uh, radiator intercooler. So all those things to follow. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.